Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, and today I'm going to give you a showcase on Bloodstained's latest playable character, Zengetsu. This showcase is going to be broken down into several parts. First, I'll show you an in-depth look at all of Zengetsu's abilities to prepare you for your adventure. Next, I'll give you an overview of what is possible for Zengetsu compared to Miriam, as there are plenty of changes to keep up with. Finally, I'll wrap up with some strategies for the harder sections of the game, as playing Zengetsu is quite different from Miriam. Zengetsu's basic attack is the Quick Slash, you see that by pressing Square or X on Xbox, whatever it is on Switch and PC. He also has an Overhead Fierce Slash, do that by pressing R2. To use Zengetsu's daggers or knives, you can press Triangle. And then he also has a Grappling Hook that he can use by pressing the right stick. I will say on PS4 this is a little tough to use effectively. Um, occasionally this can stun enemies, uh, it doesn't happen to all of them, and they have to be pretty weak. It, I've never been able to get it to work on bosses. Um, uh, but if that happens, you can, uh, press triangle very quickly, and he will do, like, basically a guaranteed hit with a projectile, uh, while they're stunned. Uh, he also has an ability called Annihilated Mind, and this changes Zangetsu's sword element. So, you can either go for Normal, Fire, Ice or electric, uh, and then each of the following abilities have different effects based on the element that you choose. So we'll do it with normal first, uh, and all these abilities use MP, so you have to keep an eye on that. But that said, Zangetsu can collect uh, roses out of the lamps to restore his MP. So the first one is Wild God's Blade, and that's done by pressing quarter circle forward and square. Just looks like a strong overhead attack, similar to R2, but does some more damage. And he also has Flying Vajra, which is down, down, square. So he does uh, a leaping overhead attack. And he has Eternity, which is a block, which is actually a deflect. Um, so if you were to block a physical attack with this, the enemy would be frozen. And then you can walk behind them and then slash them a few times. This is very effective on late game bosses, Dominique especially. And then his final special ability is uh, Form is Emptiness. So you do that by pressing forward, back, forward, and square. Just like that. You can do it in either direction. And these flame pillars also deal damage if they hit uh, whoever's in the way. So the only ability that is not affected by the element is the form is emptiness. That will always have flame pillars. Uh, it will not change elements at any time. And eternity, of course, is just a standard deflect. But while God's Blade with ice forms an ice trail, as does Flying Vajra. Electricity, uh, sort of the same thing, except it just creates a thunder or lightning field, and then again with Flying Vajra. So we're gonna switch back over to fire here. I'll show you what those look like. So big fire explosion, and then same thing here. Now, something interesting with Zangetsu is you can combo a few moves, um, such as the grappling hook into an R2. So that's uh, pretty effective for if you wanna jump over somebody, similar to what he does in his boss fight, you could always do that. Um, he also has a couple standard moves as well as a hidden move. So uh, L1 is just a back dash similar to Alucard's in Symphony of the Night. You can spam this to kind of move more quickly. Although it's not completely invincible. I have heard of some speedrunners making it completely invincible, but uh, I'm not sure how to execute that myself. Another move that he has is a taunt. So this, just by holding up, he will give, do like a, you know, come over here sort of move, sort of like Morpheus and in the Matrix, and then hold up the sword as if he were doing Eternity. Um, just be aware that the sword does have to be out like this in order for the block or deflect to actually work. Otherwise, you're just going to take a hit and look foolish. Um, so yeah, those are basically all of his moves. Um, they can all be very, very effective. Um, form is Emptiness, I do want to say, uh, can basically be interchanged with the L1 dash. So this will evade pretty much every single move in the game, including many projectiles. Um, especially on the hidden boss. Um, but if you want to travel even further, faster, uh, you can always do the form is emptiness. Just like that. And that's all of his moves. For Zangetsu, the entire castle is available once you reach it. You still have to go through the Galley Minerva and kill Vapar as your first boss, but after that, you're free to do absolutely anything with very little exception. All bosses inside the castle are available for you to go after in any order. That said, you may want to take care of some before others, as the zones do not scale with level. Zangetsu is able to explore 100% of the map without issue. While Miriam requires various shards and items to gain access to certain areas, 
Zangetsu does not have the same requirements. Where Miriam would encounter spikes that require the Aegis Plate, the spikes are removed for Zangetsu. Where Miriam would require the Dimension Shift Shard to move through walls, there are Torii gates that Zangetsu can walk through. Where Miriam would need to assemble the Pass Plate to board the train, Zangetsu can simply walk through the gate unopposed. Where Miriam would require the Invert Shard to reach parts of the castle, Zangetsu can use his Empty Blade ability to fly. Zangetsu gets no chests, shards, or item drops, but he does have access to HP and MP max ups. You will need to get creative to get some of them though. Since Zangetsu has no chests in the castle, he effectively has all keys in his possession from the very beginning. He can enter the Carpenter's Room, Celeste's Room, Millionaire's Room, and the Warhorse Room without needing to find a key. Additionally, Zangetsu can swim and walk underwater without the use of any special shards. This means that you can enter the castle through the underground waterway, as opposed to the main entrance, right from the beginning of the game. You do not need the Bloodsteel Shard to drain the blood pool in the entrance, as it is pre-drained for Zangetsu. The only restriction that Zangetsu has is that he must defeat every castle boss, Jeebel included, in order to gain access to the Den of Behemoths and Glacial Tomb. Once you defeat all 14 bosses in the castle, you can head to the Garden of Silence to cut the moon open. Zangetsu is always equipped with his trusty Zangetsuto, so you don't need to worry about finding it to cut the moon. Similar to Richter Belmont's quest in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, the story elements are entirely removed from the game when playing as Zangetsu. The fight against Doppelganger is still against Miriam's Doppelganger. The two encounters against Zangetsu remain the same. Unfortunately, the playable Zangetsu does not have access to the crazy abilities that the Nightmare version of Zangetsu has in his second boss encounter. I think he'd be a little bit too overpowered if that wasn't the case. For the most part, just like with Richter, Zangetsu will steamroll the vast majority of the game with ease. I beat Dominique and Bale at level 32, but I did have to grind up to level 35 in order to successfully take down Zangetsu's secret extra final boss. Zangetsu is incredibly strong from the outset and will demolish every boss until you get to the Den of Behemoths with little issue. I recommend leaving Zangetsu number 2 until last, as there is a bit of a difficulty spike in the Oriental Sorcery Lab, but other than that, every boss will fall before you very quickly. Once you reach the game's final bosses, Gremory, Dominique, and Bale, you'll need to begin to employ some advanced moves in order to come out on top, most notably his block ability. Eternity can block all physical attacks, as well as beam-style projectiles. You'll need to spend some time practicing this move and learning each of the final boss's abilities, but once you get a feel for it, you're going to become very deadly. Keep in mind that when you defeat Dominique, you'll immediately have to face Bale with no opportunity to heal. You'll need to make sure that you take as little damage as possible against Dominique so that you can face Bale at full strength. One important note against Bale is that even though you can deal damage to all three heads, the only damage that will actually count against the boss's 4,444 HP health pool has to be dealt to the head that Dominique is riding. If you deal damage to a head that Dominique is not riding, it will not count. Knives and Zangetsu's form as emptiness ability are the keys to success in the final fight against Bale. Once you defeat Bale, you'll be transported back to the Hall of Termination with a brand new boss waiting for you. Defeating this boss will complete your playthrough with Zangetsu and roll the credits. I'll leave this boss a secret for this video, but if you do need help, I have a guide available that I will link in the video description below, as well as put up a card in the corner of this video. Overall, Zangetsu is a fun addition to the game. If you're a Symphony of the Night fan, you should know what to expect from an additional character. No new story elements are added, and the entire castle is accessible since Zangetsu has the ability to essentially fly from the start of the game. This lets you play through the game in a new order every time, as well as lets you do low-level challenges against the game's later bosses. He doesn't get any special shards or items, but his starting arsenal is enough to cut even the biggest foes down to size. And that's it. That's the big overview on Zangetsu and Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to help you out. You can also join my Discord server and chat with the community there and ask questions. If you're looking for more guides for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, please subscribe to the channel so you can be alerted when new videos go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, and as always, I'll switch Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah!